Ciao a tutti, mi chiamo Charlotte e oggi vi do 5 principi di base per capire meglio la lingua italiana. So today we're going to look at five basic principles which should help you understand the Italian language a bit better. So this is really for those who are at sort of towards the start of their language learning journey. Um, but this is also predominantly put out there today for my Italian Language Club members. So, um, ciao tutti. Hello everyone. Later on today, I'll, I'll be sending you the link for this video along with uh, something along the lines of this document. Uh, it, it will, of course, be in digital format. Um, so that will outline the points that I'm going to explain today. It will give you um, some examples. There'll be some exercises. The link to this video will be contained within the PDF. Um, and there may even be some links to some additional reading or further reading or study that you can do uh, linked to some of the points made here. So, um, if you're interested in joining my Italian language club or indeed my French language club or my soon-to-be English language club which takes place every month um, online, feel free to get in contact. So you can just look under the video and you'll find all the contact details that you need, uh, email, uh, website, Facebook page, etc. Ok? Ok, cominciamo. So, point one. Um, when you're talking in Italian, um, you don't always need to use the subject pronoun. So, using the subject pronouns, which I've listed on my board here, io, that's I, tu, that's uh, that means you for someone that you either know or someone you're addressing informally. Io, I, tu, you. Lui means he. Lei means she. Lei with a capital L, which sounds exactly the same when you speak it, of course, as this one, which means she. This lei with a capital L is the formal form of address. So it's akin to the vu form in French, for example, and that's used with people that you don't know, people that maybe are in a position of authority or maybe people who are older than you. Um, noi refers to we. Voi is you, plural. So um, in English, we just say you. How are you? What are you doing today? Do you want some food? Um, you drive a nice car, <laughs> that kind of thing. When you're addressing anybody in English, you, you use the word you, that's the subject pronoun, um, which is often in front of verbs in sentences, you know, that's, we'll come on to subject pronouns in a moment, I'll clarify with some examples. But in Italian you can use tu, tu, if it's informal, singular, uh, voi, let's go in there so you can see that one, v-o-i, voi, that's you guys, or you all, it might even be as few as two people that you're addressing, but if you are addressing two people, instead of using the two, you'll use voi. Okay? And then lei, that one there, lei, would be the formal form of addressing you if you're speaking to someone who is, um, and you're using the courteous formal form of address. So, io means I, tu means you, informal singular. Louis means him. You might be able to remember Louis because it sounds a bit like the French name Louis. It sounds exactly the same. Um, Lei means she. You might think of Princess Leia or Leila, the Eric Clapton song, for example. Louis, boy, so that means he. Uh, Leila or Leia, she, or a uh, girl. I, you, he, she. You, formal singular, lei. Noi, that's we. Voi, that's you, all of you guys, you all, more than one, you. And loro, so what's loro? Loro is the subject pronoun for they. So um, you don't need to use these. In English we would say, for example, I um, like coffee. You don't tend to say like coffee on its own. You use the subject pronoun I. I like coffee. 
that allows the person being addressed or the, per the person listening to the speaker to know who is being spoken about. Excuse me a moment, someone's ringing my phone. I thought I'd put that off. Obviously not, so let's just uh, take that off my break. Scusatemi. Okay, so in that example there, uh, scusatemi, excuse me, I'm sorry, that kind of thing. I use the scusate. That's the voi form of the verb scusare or scusare, uh, scusare which is to excuse. So, um, so the the verb is conjugated in the voi form because I'm asking you all to excuse me. Okay, scusate me. So, um, so yes, you don't need to use these subject pronouns. For example, um, you might learn in a textbook, io mangio una mela. Tu mangi una mela. Lui, lei mangia una mela. And there is nothing wrong with that at all. That's just a choice of the people who've created the, um, the learning materials to link the subject pronoun, io, tu, lui, lei, etc. with the correct conjugation of the verb. So when I say conjugation, just to clarify, if you don't already know, that is um, the difference between each um, written form of the verb when you change the subject. So for example, this goes on to point two actually, which is that uh, Italian verbs change depending on their subject and like in agreement with their subject. So for example, uh, io, io, Parlo, parlo. You could equally say parlo. You don't need the io, okay? Because you've got an o at the end of that verb. You've taken the verb parlare, you've taken the are ending off, and you've added an o. And by adding that o to the end of this stem, parlare becomes parl, and then because you're putting it in the io form, you add an O. That's for like the present tense. So if I wanted to say you speak, this is the verb to speak by the way, <laughs> to speak, parlare. I would take the um, ARE ending of the verb and then I would add an I. So I'll just do that here on my little whiteboard. Uh, I think I'll zoom out a bit as well. Um, Così, okay, so parlare is to speak, okay? This happens with any ARE verb, by the way. And there's also several other types of verb, IRE and ERE verbs. They're like kind of the main three types. Uh, it's not necessarily that simple, but um, let's just say it is for now. So to speak is, a, is the verb we're looking at. So in order to say, I speak, I just take the ARE ending off it. ARE is, an ARE verb is one of the categories, it's just a way of categorizing the verbs that exist in Italian. Um, so if I take the ARE ending off it and I add an O, suddenly this means I speak or I'm speaking. But I don't need to put the subject pronoun IO in front of it. I can. Io parlo. There could be a slightly different sort of um, intention behind it if you say io parlo, um, or if you um, if you were to put io at the end, for example, parlo io. <laughs> hey, I'm speaking. <laughs> you know, it can kind of sound like a little confrontational or a bit aggressive, but you don't need to put io in front of it. Italians generally don't, you know? Um, so you could just say parlo, okay? And this is particularly useful if you're um, talking about something that you do uh, habitually, for example, um, or something that you're, you're doing ongoingly. So for example, parlo italiano, um, parlo con uh, una amica, for example, I'm speaking with a friend or I speak with a friend every so often, I'm speaking Italian, or I speak Italian in general, 
we'll come on to the difference between the I speak and I'm speaking. In fact, parlo can be translated in either way. And we'll come on to that in point, um, point four. But the main thing is you don't need the io in front of the verb. What is more important is that you conjugate the verb in the correct way to agree with io. Okay? So what that looks like in Italian is taking the ending of, of the verb, that's the last three letters, and then putting an O there, if you're talking I. I'm doing, I'm writing, I'm going, I'm eating, I'm paying, I'm watching, that kind of thing. Um, they're all very common verbs. Here we have the conjugations of one of the verbs that you'll encounter like as soon as you start learning or speaking Italian, because it means to speak, therefore it's one of the verbs linked to language acquisition obviously. So here I've just put the, it's also very regular, parlare is an ARE verb um, and it's a very regular one. So once you get down to the stem, which is parla, parla, all you need to know is the endings for each subject. Okay, so you don't need the subject, but it might be useful when you're learning, say you're writing at a verb table, to write in a bracket the uh, the subject pronoun. So for example, um, the subject pronoun for parlo is io. io. The subject pronoun for parli is tu. The subject pronouns, plural, because it could either be him, he or she. Actually it could be lei as well, which means you. Okay, He, she or you in the formal form. We can put them here, just in brackets. Louis, lei, or lei. Okay, you see I'm going along, this one's laid out in one sort of horizontal line, but here they're just going down in two columns, um, sort of vertically. Io parlo, or simply parlo. Parlo italiano. Parlo velocemente. Uh, oggi non parlo. <laughs> tu parli francese? So that was a question there. So I can't remember whether I used the tu pronoun or not. You can ask that question with or without the tu. Parli francese? Or tu parli francese? Or you could put the tu at the end. Parli francese, tu which is quite often the case, just to clarify who's being asked, or especially if you're looking at someone and there's two or three people in a room and you go, hmm, do you speak French? You, <laughs> as opposed to someone else that I could be addressing by tu. So, io parlo, tu parli, lui, lei, or the formal lei meaning you, parla, parliamo, so that's from the noi pronoun. Whenever you have um, a verb, like in the present tense, in the, in the noi form, that means we. We are doing something, or we do something. So, for example, um, we think of some verbs. Uh, mangiamo. Mangiamo una pizza. We are eating a pizza. Or we eat a pizza. Um, guardiamo un film. We are watching a film. Or we watch a film. Um, ascoltiamo la radio. We are listening to the radio. We listen to the radio. So I think that the we form or the noi form of verb conjugations in the present tense is quite easy because once you get used to the stem of the verb, there's the stem here, all you need to do is add iamo. Iamo. So that's quite a nice thing to say. Parliamo, mangiamo, cantiamo, balliamo, scriviamo, etc. So most of the example verbs I used there were ARE verbs, okay? So if you didn't understand them, you could probably go back and try and listen to the stem of the verb. Um, balliamo, balliamo is from the verb ballare, which means to dance. So you take the ARE off the ending and you're left with the stem. Bal, 
B A L L. Okay, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Hopefully, it'll become clear. Ballare. Okay, so we take that stem, get rid of the A R E ending. That leaves us with the. Sorry, we. Yes, we take the stem, we get rid of the ending. That leaves us with this. We can call this the stem of the verb, or you might hear it called the root of the verb. You get the picture. It's what's left when you take the ending off. And then we add iamo. So if you knew that, or if you know that ballare means to dance, and you see or you hear balliamo, the iamo bit should tell you that's in the we form. We are dancing. We dance. <laughs> so the iamo tells you that the conjugation is um, made in accordance with noi, which means we. So that's kind of my favourite one, in that it doesn't really change between the different types of verbs. Um, my next point is that uh, ARE verbs are the most prominent type of verb in Italian. Uh, so we'll come on to that in a moment, but, but the these are conjugations, these endings apply to ARE verbs, okay? So we're talking about not ERE verbs, not IRE verbs, ARE verbs. And these are regular, as in these follow the set pattern. There's always exceptions. Um, but if you know that a verb is regular, and lots of the common ones are, to watch, to listen, that kind of thing, to speak, then these are the endings you need. And this is the present tense, okay? So we're not talking about... I will eat, or I used to eat, or I have eaten, or any kind of combined tenses like that. We're just talking about the simple present tense. Okay? So, noi is um, a subject pronoun, which means we. But you don't need to use it, because you can just conjugate the verb by putting iamo at the end, for example, in the noi form, and the person listening knows that you're saying, ah, we speak, <laughs> ah, we are dancing, because the ending tells you who the subject or subjects of that verb are. Okay, so it's kind of hard to get your head around, especially if you're an English uh, native speaker. So let's have a look. Um, the next one in this list, subject pronouns, voi. So voi goes there and it means you plural or you guys, if you like you all. We don't tend to say that in the UK, but I think it's quite common in like the States. Okay, the last one is loro, which means they. Okay, so it could be they, a bunch of guys, they, a bunch of girls, or it could be a mixed bunch of people. So at this point, when you're talking about the subject, <clears throat> when you're talking about loro, there's no, dis um, there's no distinguishable, what's the word? There's no distinction, that's the word. <laughs> there isn't a distinction with loro between the gender. So um, that's not to say that other things in the sentence don't change depending on the, the gender of the people being spoken about. But the subject pronoun loro is the same whether it's a bunch of girls you're talking about or a bunch of boys. Okay, so loro parlano or simply parlano because non c'è bisogno di utilizzare sempre uh, un pronome soggetto così. You don't always need to use the subject pronoun as long as the verb you're using is conjugated in a agreement with the subject. Parlano. They speak or they're speaking. I tell you what, this is what I'll do. I'm going to just um, point this at the board. Okay, I'll point this at the board and I'm going to say um, I'm going to pick one of these at random, and you guys have to decide who the subject is, okay? Andiamo, okay? Parla. Parla, parla, parla. Parla. Parla, parla, parla. Eccolo qua, parla. So, if you hear the word parla in a sentence, like parla italiano, it could mean three things, potentially. It could mean he's speaking, or he speaks Italian. Or it could mean she is speaking, she speaks Italian. Okay, you with me? It could mean either he, 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 
he speaks or she speaks. What's going on with me today? Parla could mean he speaks or she speaks. It could also mean he is speaking or she is speaking. We're going to come on to that difference there in point four. However, if it's a question, parla italiano, it could be that someone is asking you. Parla italiano? Parla francese? Lei? Lei parla francese? If someone's looking at you and asking you a question and the verb ends with like an A, like parla italiano, and you think, hang on a minute, parla is the third person in the singular, uh, that's a conjugation which means, does he speak Italian? Does she speak Italian? Remember, they might be asking you in a very polite way using the lei subject pronoun. So they're addressing you as like a, in just a very courteous way. Okay, so be aware that if something sounds like he or she is doing something, if it's a, uh, it could be talking about or to you in the formal form of address. Well, it's a lot to think about, isn't it? Hopefully some of this should be clear to my club members and um, hopefully <laughs> to anyone else who's watching. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to reply to you as soon as I can, okay? Okay, next one, next one, next one. Parlate, parlate, parlate velocemente. Parlate velocemente. Parlate. So, parlate. So, let's see. Parlate, parlate, parlate. Eccolo qua. So, you're not going to necessarily hear voi parlate all the time. You might just hear the verb parlate on its own. For example, I could ask all of you, whoever's watching, hopefully lots of people, parlate italiano? Parlate galese? Parlate tedesco? Parlate lo spagnolo? Etc. Do you guys speak Italian, French, German, whatever? So if I'm asking more than one person something, um, I wouldn't use the to form, parli, and I wouldn't use the lei form, parla, because I'm addressing you all. I'd use the voi form. There's the voi form of the verb. Parlate. And remember, I don't need to put voi before it in the sentence, but I could clarify like this. Parlate l'italiano, voi. I could kind of put it at the end to sort of clarify who I'm addressing. Again, that's kind of weird, but we kind of do do it sometimes in English, for example. Um... Do you speak Italian, you guys? You know, you could put it at the end, you guys, to clarify who's being addressed. Okay, so that's where you see these subject pronouns. Sometimes they appear either at the beginning or at the end of a sentence or a question to kind of clarify. Um, sometimes it's for emphasis as well. Okay, let's do, um, let's do another one, okay? Parlo molte lingue. Parlo molte lingue. Parlo molte lingue. Parlo. So you can probably hear that that's just an O at the end of parl, which means I speak or I'm speaking. Molte lingue. Many languages. Okay. Parlano con gli amici. Parlano con gli amici. Parlano con gli amici. Parlano con gli amici. Parlano. Parlano. Loro parlano con gli amici. You could also, like, there will be other contexts often, you know, you won't just hear always parlano on its own. The subject might be mentioned in the phrase or the subject. For example, it could be um, Michele, Stefano e Piero. Parlano con gli amici. Or it could be, le ragazze parlano con gli amici. You know, it, it could be someone's name or names in front of the verb. Or it could be um, like a little noun phrase. 
the boys, the girls, the students, my children, my parents, they're speaking, whatever the rest of the sentence is. So even though in English you would use the subject pronoun if you're referring to someone and then follow it with a verb, I like, I want, I'm going, he is arriving, um, they are writing, they are speaking. Even though in English we use that subject pronoun, we don't necessarily need it in Italian, okay? It's quite normal not to hear a subject pronoun in a sentence or a question. So you don't have to use them. <laughs> but what you do need to know, whether you use these or not, is the conjugations for the verb. So here is just an example of regular ARE endings in the present tense for a very common verb. So just, you know, if you find a couple of ARE verbs, take off the ARE part and then put these endings on, and then you've got a conjugation table. Ecco! <laughs> it's pretty cool, huh? And while you're on that, maybe go down the list um, of conjugations and add in, in a bracket, the subject pronouns, just to remind yourself. And remember, there's three potential subject pronouns here in the third person singular. That's another thing to mention. So sometimes you'll see um, verb tables or conjugation tables, they've got various names like that, written out. Um, sometimes you see them in two columns. I often do it on my club handouts or course documentation to save space on a page because three lines <laughs> and two columns takes up less space than six lines in one column. So here, for example, I've got um, an example of a conjugation in English. I want, you want, he, she wants. They're all, like in Italian, they're all singular, as in they're talking about a single subject. I is one person. It's, it's me. It's just me. You, in the two form, is just one person. Lui, lei, or lei, they're all individuals. Okay, so they're singular First person, second person, third person, singular. When someone says, oh, don't talk about yourself in the third person, okay? I think there's like a sort of joke or a reference, whether it's true or not, to... Is it Napoleon talking about himself in the third person? So, if I were talking about myself in the third person, I would not be saying... I want this, or I'm great, or I'm tired. I would be saying, Charlotte is tired. Charlotte is great. <laughs> um, Charlotte is pointing at the board at the moment. Instead of using, she is doing something, the third person, one, two, three, singular, the third person, talking about yourself in the third person, instead of doing that, I don't tend to do that, only for fun. I talk about myself in the first person singular. I am writing on the board. I am speaking to the camera. I am scribbling, for example. Okay, so that's singular. These over here, they're not singular, they are plural. Okay, but the first, second, third thing still applies. So these are all plural, plural subjects. Okay, so. These are your singular ones, and these are your plurals. Noi, that means we. We like, we want, we go, whatever. All of the verbs in the noi form of the present tense, what's going on now, or at the moment, or habitually, ongoingly, if you like, they have iamo at the end. Right? Useful little cheat. All ARE verbs have ate at the end in the voi form, and that means you guys. You guys like, you guys want, you guys speak, you guys look, etc. Loro, that means they, that's the third person, one, two, three, uh, sorry, the, <laughs> the, the third person, plural, one, two, three, plural. So it kind of helps seeing it written out that way. So um, I would suggest you go and find some ARE verbs, some common ones, you can find a list just like by typing in Italian ARE verbs, common Italian, regular ARE verbs. I'll put some like um, search terms and sort of tags underneath so that you can go off and do this if you like. Um, and then you can conjugate them by putting these endings 
find the stem of the verb by taking ARE off. Add the endings thus, and then, just in brackets for the sake of seeing if you remember, getting familiar with them, put the subject pronouns io tu, lui, lei, lei, noi, voi, loro alongside them in brackets to remind you. You don't need them, but if you do hear them or need to use them, want to use them, they're the ones you need with those conjugations. Wow, we've already done half an hour, <laughs> so let me just get some coffee. Um, bevo un café. Okay. Prendo un café. Voglio un café. All of those verbs, prendo, bevo, voglio, um, they weren't actually A-R-E verbs, but they did end in an O. Bevo. I'm drinking. Voglio. I want. Uh, prendo. I'll take or I'll get a coffee. Mm. Bellissimo. Un bel café. Okay, so let's move on to point three. Pretty cool that, hey? That's like my new, that's my new toy, this desk. And also, o mal di schiena. I've got a bad back. I just injured my back uh, yesterday somehow. And so it's much nicer to stand up than to sit down at desk. So that was a good buy. Here we have, of course, three quite regular, I mean, regular, but also quite common ARE verbs. Mangiare, parlare, and guardare. So the point here is that a lot of verbs in Italian are ARE verbs. So this isn't necessarily great advice, but um, if in doubt and you don't know a verb, um, but maybe you know a similar ver a verb that could be similar in, like, in Italian, and you're clutching at straws, say something and put are at the end, <laughs> okay? And people will probably get the idea that ah, they're trying to say something. For example, the verb prendere is to take. Um, but if you can't quite remember how to say to take, um, you could probably say prendere. And, you know, they probably get what you're saying. So, um, But most verbs are ARE verbs, and they're very regular. And here are the conjugation, the endings that you need in the present tense. So take some time to have a look at those, but they're the most common. Um, okay, so the point about um, this one here, which is, um, oh no, actually I'm going to give you an example. Before I, before I lose track completely, I'll give you an example of that verb. So, mangiare. Mangio. Mangio. So, what I've done there is I've taken the A-R-E off, which leaves you with mangi, and then I've added an O, manjo, okay? G, I, and an O is a jo sound. G and an I is like a G, but a G followed by an A would be ga. So if you see an I after a G, it's G, G, jo, manjo. I and an O after a G, jo. Um, okay, parlare means to speak, There's the stem. Taking the ending off, that leaves you with the stem. This is what we're talking about here with conjugations. Take it back to the stem, add an O, and that means I speak or I'm speaking. Mangio, mangio una mella, I'm eating an apple. Non mangio la carne, I don't eat meat. So here you've got, you've got something we're going to come on to in point four, but there are several ways you can translate manjo into English and there's several ways you can translate parlo into English it depends on the context okay and what follows it so we'll come on to that guardare changes to guard take the ending off and it leaves you with the stem or the root of the verb and then you put an O at the end okay so that's how you do that so you don't necessarily need the subject pronoun. In fact, what you do need to know is conjugations. And the conjugations, in English, we don't have that many conjugations. So take the verb to want. I want, you want, he, she wants. There's an S on the end of wants there. I want, you want, he or she wants, with an S. We want, you plural want, they want. So you, you, in English, this is what you do. You take, um, you take the pronoun, subject pronoun, I, you, he, she, whatever. 
and then you follow it with a verb I want and then you follow it with whatever you want so like uh, some cheese <laughs> a coffee a new car a bit more time <laughs> whatever you want but are you he she sorry are you we and they are all followed by want but if you were going to say he or she and follow it by that verb then it's not quite finished he she want he she want you need an s at the end he or she wants to do something he or she wants a coffee okay so putting an s at the end of that verb want is conjugating the verb to agree with the subject okay so English conjugation is a lot easier in the present tense uh, if you just take the verb you just have to add an s like generally there are some exceptions where the verb is irregular and the whole verb changes for example I am you are he or she is okay we are they are you've got am is no am are is etc so am are is there's three variations three conjugations there and then the next two we are they are you're back to r again <laughs> so there's like three different conjugations but in italian you've got one two three four uno due tre quattro cinque sei okay so there are more there's a greater a greater number of conjugations between subjects okay so that's difficult but you don't have to use the pronouns and the great thing is you once you know these endings you can apply them to any like regular verbs then you just need to know the exceptions okay okay uh, let's have a look I pay I'm paying equals pago okay so the point I'm trying to make here point four on my tips is that the Italian present tense conjugates in a couple of ways which actually works in the favor of English um, mother tongue speakers okay so I've touched upon it a little bit with manjo meaning I eat or I'm eating parlo meaning I am speaking or it could mean I speak guardo can mean I'm watching like right this moment I'm watching something or it could mean I watch like every week I watch a, an Italian film for example um, incidentally guardo can also translate that verb guardare can also translate as to look at so for example I'm looking at you or I look at the birds outside my office window every morning so guardo can be I look at I'm looking at I watch or I'm watching so there's actually four translations for that one but normally there's at least two translations for the present tense conjugation in Italian um, so this is good because it saves you guys time and um, let me give you some examples so uh, having a, a young daughter now who's learning to speak and it's doing pretty well actually she uses verbs in this kind of present continuous a lot and I realize that we we don't tend to say um, I eat I watch um, I give we tend to say I am giving I am watching I am listening I am calling so we use this I am plus verb plus ing okay uh, it's like the present continuous I am verb plus ing so this is your subject pronoun subject pronoun then we've got the verb to be as it happens I know this isn't an English lesson but it might help so that's I am plus a verb so for example I am eating <laughs> uh, you are eating Obviously, that's together as one word, but um, this is just to help you see the structure. So that in Italian would just be parlo, or scusa, mangio, mangio. You take the verb mangiare to eat, take off the ending, 
you're left with manj, and then you add the ending for io, manjo. So for the two form, it would be you are eating. So actually, that's one, two, three words in English, in Italian. Mangi. We are eating. We are eating. Okay, so we don't have to say noi because you don't need the subject pronoun all the time in Italian. You need the verb. Eating is the verb, or to eat. To eat is the verb. That's mangiare. So it takes take the verb down to the stem, which is actually mangi. Now what happens with the Italian like noi form of a verb? The ending is in the present tense it's Iamo, okay? So if the verb is already mangi and there's an I there, there's the verb mangiare. Take off the ARE. It leaves us with mangi. When you take it down to the stem, it actually looks like the two form. Okay, you don't need to put another I there in the two form, because there's already an I. So it already sounds like the two form mangi. We want to put Iamo at the end. Iamo is I A M O but we don't need to put a second I after an I. One will suffice. Mangiamo. We just put the amo part, okay? And that's we eat, or we are eating. Mangi, you eat, you are eating. Mangio, I eat, I am eating. So in English we tend to use this I am eating, I am reading structure. In Italian, you just use like one word, and you don't even need to say io mangio. You don't need to say tu mangi or noi mangiamo. But you can add them. I'm sorry if there was anything missing there. But you can add them if you want to clarify who's being spoken about, okay? Mangio, mangi, lui le mangia, or just mangia. Mangiamo, mangiate, mangiano. They can mean, I am doing something, or they can translate just as, I eat. Let's take the verb, mm, what kind of verb can we take now? Mm -mm. Ah, pagare, okay? Pagare. That means to pay, okay? So if I wanted to say, let me just write a few things down and then like, you can translate them. Okay, one, two, three, four. So, um, to pay. To pay, to pay, sounds like a to pay you wear on your head. Um, pagare is an ARE verb. The endings are regular when you conjugate them, apart from a couple of instances where, um, I'll show you, you require an H put in to keep the G sound. We'll have a look. So, I pay would be pago. We take the stem of the verb and we add an O. So this is where we're going to see an extra letter put in. So pago, paghi, paga, paghiamo, pagate, pagano. O, i, a, iamo, ate, ano. Okay? If you like, they're the endings. But here, if we take it down, if we take it down to the stem of the verb, pag, and then we put an I at the end, just on its own. Do you remember what I said about a G and an I? A G followed by an I becomes a G sound. It's not a G sound, and the G sound is what we need. We need a hard G sound. So in, in Italian, to make that hard G sound, you add an H after the G. So, pagi non si usa. Paghi così. P A G H I vuol dire you are paying. But it could also mean you pay, like every month you pay your bills. Or, oh, you pay um, your electricity by debit card. 
it can mean both something that's habitual or something that's going on presently. I'm going to have to stop the video here, um, or I should just answer the door. Wow, I didn't realise there would be so many <laughs> interruptions today. It was a delivery, of course it was. Sorry about that, guys. I can't uh, give up 45 minutes of, um, of uh, a video because um, I haven't got the time. So, non uh, tempo. So, sorry about that kind of blank space for a bit. Um, I'm not sure if I can edit it out at the moment. But um, if I find a way to do that and I find the time, I'll do it, but it probably won't happen. So, schools up, schools up, schools up. So, where were we? Where were we? Dove eravamo? Pago. I pay, I'm paying. Paghi, with an extra H after the G to keep that G sound. That happens in Italian. We're going to see it in a minute with the with this one. Um, can mean you are paying, as in the two form, informal singular two. Um, or it can mean you pay. So it can be this present continuous or just the kind of present, simple present tense. But in any case, it's just one word in Italian. Um, in English, it's at least two and possibly three. So <laughs> quite easy when you get used to it. So we pay, like we pay, uh, we pay every month. Or um, uh, we, we, we pay the teacher in cash example okay so we pay we need the verb pagare eccolo là eccolo qui take it down to the stem pag we add iamo hmm c'è un problema so when you've got pag and then iamo the g and the i together make a g sound okay like in the name uh, giovanni G I O V A W N I Giovanni. It's a jo, jo, G jo sound, and it's followed by an O. So here, as in the example above, we add an H. Paghiamo. Perfect. Now it sounds like the verb pagare because it's got that hard G. Paghiamo. Um, if, for example, you're you're out for a meal, there's loads of loads of you there, <laughs> um, and you say. If I wanted to pay with my husband for everyone else, I could say, paghiamo noi. No, no, no. Paghiamo noi. Okay? If you put the noi, subject pronoun, after the verb, it sounds like you're saying, we'll pay. Okay? As opposed to you guys, though, we want to pay it. Okay? We are paying. We are paying. We are paying. Us. Okay? So, for emphasis and to kind of Make the distinction between the other people in the group. Um, you can put the pronoun noi after it. Um, <laughs> if you were making a joke or if you were being kind of rude, you could say, you guys can pay. So how would you say that? You guys can pay. There's two things you need to do. You need to put pay, the verb to pay in the voi form, which is on the handout for anyone who's got it, or a few minutes before <laughs> on the previous page. Pagate. So A-T-E instead of A-R-E at the end is the voi form. So if you guys pay and you want to emphasize it's you guys and not us, you can put voi at the end. No. Pagate voi. You guys will pay. Or you guys are paying. Something to mention here is that um, in English we say, for example, I'll pay, he'll pay, I'll answer the door, I'll get the telephone. And we use I'll do something, or I will do something. So it's easy to um, confuse the this I will, the word will in English, or I'll, um, I'll do it, I'll pay for example. It's easy to confuse that with the future tense because it's got the word will in it. 
But in Italian, if, it, if you're about to do something like pay a bill, like imminently, or answer the door immediately, you can use the present tense. So you don't have to say, um, I plus future tense verb will pay, okay? Pagherò. <laughs> you don't need to use that. You can just use the present tense. No, no, no. Pago io. I'll pay. Um, I'm just trying to think of some other examples. Um, I'll... I'm just trying to think of A-R-E verbs. I'll pay. I'll answer. Rispondo io. That's not an A-R-E verb, but to I'll answer. I'll get it. I'll do it. So you can use the present tense where sometimes in English we use I will or I'll. But it's not the future tense in English that we're talking about. It's something you're immediately going to do. So that you can use the present tense for as well in Italian. Um, another thing to mention about noi is that the um, iamo form in the present tense is like an imperative that translates as let's pay or balliamo, let's dance. Ascoltiamo la musica, let's listen to music. So um, I'll probably put that in like a second part uh, to this this series of basic principles to help you better understand Italian because um, iamo has a few different functions but it's like kind of the easiest conjugation the we form, noi form of present tense verbs it's an easy one to use and you can use it across all verbs so they pay pagare is the verb and you just need to know the ending for loro which means they Pagano. So because there's an A in the A-N-O ending for loro, you don't need to put an H in there. Um, it's only when it's followed by an I or an E. Okay, so we just need an H in paghi in the two form of paghiamo in the noi form. Right, so um, where are we? Will we finish the video in under an hour? Okay. Proviamo, let's try, let's try. That's from the verb provare, which is an A-R-E verb, and it means to try or attempt something. So, point one. You don't need to use the subject pronouns in Italian. It's, it's not like obligatory. It's not essential. Ma dove? Eccolo. Ecco qua. You don't need to use all of these. So that's point one. But you do need to know how to conjugate a verb. And um, here is an example of how to conjugate a regular A-R-E verb, okay? O, I, A, Yamo, A, Te, Ano. Um, it's worth you remembering that many, many useful verbs in Italian are A-R-E verbs, okay? And often they're regular. Um, one very useful irregular A-R-E verb I'll write it down here, but I'll talk about it probably in another video. Is the verb andare. Okay, this is highly irregular. Highly irregular. So, um, if you study ARE verbs, you'll find that this one does not follow that pattern at all. In fact, you'll find that the stem changes because it's so irregular. So, I'm going to put that there. Irregular. <laughs> okay. You don't need the subject pronouns all the time. You can use them for emphasis. You can put them at the end. Uh, you need to study the conjugations, so you need the endings. Start off with A-R-E verbs that are regular. You'll find a few that are irregular but really common. Then remember that the present tense can translate as either something you do habitually, like um, I eat meat, I don't eat meat. Um, I like cats, I don't like cats. <laughs> Uh, or it's something that's uh, a fact that's ongoing about you, I mean, um, or a habit. And it can also translate as the present continuous. So um, um, I don't have an apple here, but if I had an apple, I could bite into it and say, Mangio una mela. I'm eating an apple. Um, guardo uh, questo. I'm looking at this. It's something I'm currently doing. I verb ing. I am verb ing. Ing, that structure in English is just the present tense in Italian. It's super easy. Okay, last one. I think we might we might just make less less than an hour. If you want to make um, any sentence or short phrase in Italian or even a question negative, you just put non 
in front of it. Okay, so I'm going to go through what I've written on the board and try and give you some examples of that. Um, okay, and yeah, more. Um, hmm. So uh, to do my neg negation, I'll try and find a red pen that works. Okay. So I want to say they are not speaking. This says they're speaking. Non. They're not speaking. Let's go in there a little bit because I don't think you can see. Okay, let's get a better pen. Better pen, please, better pen. Non. Somebody's making noises now. Non parlo no. They are not speaking. Io parlo. I'm speaking. Non parlo. I'm not speaking. Parlo italiano. Non parlo italiano. I speak Italian. I don't speak Italian. Okay, um, mangio la carne, I eat meat. Non mangio la carne, I don't eat meat. Guardo il calcio, I watch football, I'm watching the football. Non guardo il calcio. Okay, now let me give you some more examples. Oh, this is handy, I wrote some stuff out earlier, I haven't used it yet. So... Here we have four very short phrases that are basically <laughs> basically sentences, if you like. Balano. The reason I've written that is because it was, um, I think it was mentioned in one of my previous videos. Um, Quando il, go il gatto non c'è, i topi ballano. When the cat's away, the mice will play or dance, because that's from the, the ballare. They are dancing, ballano. You can make it negative by putting non in front of it. Non ballano. Oh, we just had this one. Guardo il calcio. I'm watching the football. Or I watch the football if you add on something like, um, you know, the phrase of frequency. Like, uh, guardo il calcio ogni sabato. Every Saturday I watch the football. Non guardo il calcio. I don't watch the football. Or I'm not watching the football. Mangia il pane. Mangia. So there's an A at the end of mangiare there. That means he or she. Or it could be the lay form. Are you eating the bread? In the, like, the formal, courteous way of asking. Uh, non mangia. You could answer a sentence with that. Mangia il pane. No, non mangia il pane. Is he or she eating the bread? No. Non mangia il pane. No, they're not eating the bread. <laughs> or it could mean they don't eat bread. So it, it can translate in a couple of ways in English. Parliamo. Let's speak. Non parliamo. Let's not speak. <laughs> or it could be we're speaking, we're not speaking. We speak Italian, we don't speak Italian. All of these uh, can be translated by the, the present tense, okay? All of these different ways of translating into English. It's just one way of saying it in Italian. There might be other ways, actually. <laughs> you can see my video on uh, stare plus the gerund. Stare più gerundio. And you'll see an exception there, but that's a slightly different use. So for be beginners, present tense is either um, the same simple present tense as in English, or I am plus a verb plus ing at the end. Okay, right. I'm going to do a little summary. Been a bit of a crazy video today. I'm it's long. I've got a bad back. Someone rang my door. Someone rang my phone. Who's this chair there? What's going on? It's just one of those days. So you don't have to use io, tu, lui, lei, noi, voi, loro when you in front of a verb, but you do have to conjugate the verb. You need to know the endings of that verb, um, and those endings like parlo, parli, parla, parliamo, parlate, par parlano, will tell the listener. Or the person you're addressing who the subject is okay you can add the subject pronoun to emphasize or to clarify no pago io non pagate voi pago i pago io okay um there's lots of are verbs in italian if in doubt stick are at the end of uh, a stem that sounds familiar you might be understood um practice conjugating are verbs um, make a note of the subject pronouns if you need to, that's useful. Um, 
There are two ways at least of present tense Italian translating into English. Uh, we've talked about that. That's the ing form or, or not the ing form of a verb. And putting non in front of a verb makes it negative. I think we've done... Oh, we've just gone over a minute. <laughs> oh, well, it doesn't matter. Non importa. Uh, niente. We were nearly there. We were nearly there. Anyway, um, I hope, that, even though it's a very long video, I hope it's useful. Please leave me um, messages or comments underneath. And if you've got any questions, feel free to get in touch if you want to become a member of my club. Normally, uh, you get videos between sort of 20, 25 minutes and an hour. I haven't done an hour long video for a while. Um, but um, if you want to join, you can find all the details below. And uh, when I get a chance, I'll put some tags in underneath because there's quite a lot of stuff that you can go away and sort of study in your own time. Um, but these are sort of principles, basic principles that anyone learning Italian or, you know, who has been learning Italian for a while should really be familiar and aware, familiar with and aware of, because it'll just um, make things clearer as you go forward. So I think the next video I do will probably be part two to this list. Grazie mille. Buona settimana e alla prossima volta. Ciao.